one thing that you probably might have wondered about is this degrees of freedom that pops up in the output. That relates to the T distribution and the fact that uh, given the size of your data set, the distribution is going to be slightly different, have a slightly different shape. In fact, don't worry about understanding this if it's um, beginning to all sound a bit much. But um, if you, you know, had wondered about the de degrees of freedom that pops up in the analysis, I mean, the package will calculate it automatically. But it's related to the sample size. So in our case, it's going to be the sum of the two samples minus two. That degrees of freedom is going to dictate what the exact shape of the, dist the null distribution. So I think you can see the, the black line is, if you've got a very large degrees of freedom, it's going to have a, a sort of taller distribution. And then for smaller degrees of freedom, where you've got smaller sample sizes, it's going to be a little bit wider, and that will affect your p-value a bit. So it's going to give you a basically a more accurate p-value if you get the right degrees of freedom. If you've got a very large data set, then what you will find is your degrees of freedom is approaching this kind of light black line where it's infinite, and that's in fact the normal distribution. So the T distribution is just a slight variation from the normal distribution. And if you ever come across things called Z tests in the literature, that's basically a T test, but with an infinite degrees of freedom, so very similar to a T test. The Z test is going to be based on the normal distribution. So, yeah, what we've looked at, and we've looked at the ordinary T test so far, and that's for two independent groups of data. And sometimes that gets called an unpaired T test or a two sample T test. So, that's the, the most common T test. But occasionally, you're in the situation where your data are paired in some way. So, for example, if you were doing an experiment on animals, and uh, you took a measurement before treatment and then after treatment, um, you might expect the measurements to be related in some way. So we describe that as paired data. There are you know, measurements taken on the same animal. And there's a, an equivalent test called a paired t-test, which is then more appropriate. And it's still going to be about testing the null hypothesis, but the difference is a significant the difference is different from zero, from a null distribution, but you work with the differences rather than the individual means of the groups. You work with the means of the differences and their variability. So that's the paired t-test. It's sometimes also called a one-sample t-test because you've just got one sample of, dis of differences once you've taken the differences. So, yeah, just it's helpful to maybe look at a bit of data to see how that works. So this is some hypothetical data. So if you imagine you've got eight animals and you've got a measurement that was taken before treatment and then they have their treatment and have another measurement taken after treatment. You can probably see here that the data are constructed so that if they have a high value before treatment, it's high after treatment. So there's a lot of correlation before and after. So if you just did the ordinary t-test and worked with the mean of before and the mean of the after treatments and the variability between the animals, you would lose that information on the fact the animals are correlated, their measurements are correlated. So it's much better to work with the differences for each animal and then test whether these differences are significantly different from zero based on their mean and variability. So if that was done in Minitab, uh, if you sort of pick the right test in Minitab, it would summarise the data again and it's give you statistics it thinks are useful and eventually come up with a p-value. Uh, and here it's 0.06, which isn't quite significant, although it is kind of borderline significant. So you probably wouldn't want to dismiss the fact that they might be different out of hand, but you'd perhaps report well, the p-value was 0.06, and uh, therefore we haven't proved the result, but um, it was close to significance. It's perhaps interesting to compare that to what you'd have got if you treated the, the before treatment measurements and the after treatment measurements as if they were independent and did the usual two-sample t-test. And what you come up with is a completely non-significant result, so a very different result because it hasn't taken into account the fact that the measurements 
before treatment and after treatment are going to be correlated. So definitely worth considering, well, whether the data are paired in some way when doing a t-test and taking that into account. So just to summarise you know, the main points about t-tests, they're suitable for comparing data from two groups. You want to know if the groups are significantly different from each other, and it's important that the data are at least roughly normally distributed, and you can assess that using histograms. The histograms should be roughly symmetrical, but remember, if you've got a small sample, they still might not look very good. You might want to think about looking at other examples of experiments that have used the same data and see if that's normal. Nowadays, t-tests are most easily performed using a package. It would be quite onerous to do the calculations yourself and especially to extract the p-values off tables of statistics. And if the data are paired in some way, then use the paired t-test and sometimes that's called a one-sample t-test.